Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match between Vikran and Kevin. Kevin being the winner of the recent Temporal Anomaly Season 2 tournament. And Vikran is, of course, one of the better players in the game right now, although obviously Kevin wants to see if he can dethrone Vikran from that position. Vikran is going for Seesaw, while Kevin is going for Grekim. Kevin, of course, mains Grekim, so this is not at all unusual. And he, as I mentioned before, won Temporal Anomaly Season 2 with Grekim. So, I imagine this is going to go pretty well for him. Vigran, however, has found several ways for CISO to beat Grekim, or at least to outproduce Grekim and outmaneuver them in terms of taking map control, to the point that it may not matter. So it'll be very interesting to see how Kevin will be able to deal with Vigran's map control-oriented play that he typically goes for as CISO. So Kevin has very quickly gotten 6 LC in his main base. It looks like he's going very quickly for LC in his natural as well. Kevin, on the other hand, is going for his main six or 7 LC and moving his triad over to his third, getting Octos, and the rally point is set towards Vikarin's base, actually, rather than being... Oh, Kevin has just jumped back to the 12 second mark. Looks like he's moving his Arcticus, but nothing really has changed, so I was double checking everything back then. Nothing has changed there for him, so there's nothing for him to change. He is setting up an Octo and appears to be setting up scouting with it. Vikarin has not set a pause to set his economy up. He is just going straight towards the future, just fast forwarding, fast forwarding. And his special ops has seen the Octos coming in. He has not seen the triad yet, but given the direction of the Octos and the fact that Kevin generally does this, Vikarin, I'm sure, already is aware that there is a triad in the third and not in the main. So we'll see what happens when he actually sends out a more formidable attack force to scout it out. But it does appear that he is going to be at least able to... No, he's, he knows. He's already checking the third as it is when that special ops get attacked. He's not even going for the main. By the way, this is at the two-minute mark. And Kevin is just double-checking at the... No, he was just double-checking at the four-minute mark, but that... Because there is some uh, damage from his own Octos going into Vikarin's base, being carried by the blue time wave. But now Vikarin has seen Kevin's triad. And Kevin, of course, like I said, he normally does this. Vikarin is already aware that he already had the path going to the third, so no real big difference. But it is still kind of worthy of note. And now Vikarin is actually... Back in the present, he does have... A lot of damage being dealt to Kevin's forces, but Kevin is a bit further back in the past. He does have Octus coming in and Sebi's coming in, which will ultimately stop the Special Ops from dealing any real damage. Where both players are definitely very focused on remicroing and making sure this is just right. Kevin especially focused on pausing and just getting his economy perfect. He's not letting a single second go to waste when he's doing any of this. Making sure to pause whenever building any new RPs and just building any, anything, really. Commanding anything, building anything. He's doing pause right before every single order, which great way to make sure it's precise, although he is gradually losing meta time every time he does that. The fast forwarding does help, however Vikarin is, well, Vikarin has a bit of initiative, but he hasn't really, he's taken advantage of it somewhat, he is getting construction, but he hasn't built to, into the future, so both players are definitely focused on the past, neither player has really taken advantage of the meta time, well, the time in the future, which allows them easier production. Neither player has really taken advantage of this, both players are focused on the near past, but within a minute from the present, but still in the past, so they are using up Chrono Energy to do anything they do. Vikarin continuing to double-check the attack, making sure he... trying to see what angles he can actually get in from, and possibly trick out Vikarin... I'm sorry, trick out Kevin. Vikarin wants to make sure he can get as much damage as he can with that Special Ops. He is certainly not giving up from there. While Kevin, of course, wants to prevent any damage coming in, and Kevin... It appears that he's not really setting up any defenses back near the pass in this blue time wave. Well, the special ops hasn't really come in yet from the blue time wave, but here it is. The, this red is probably going to be is probably that special ops coming in, hitting the RPs back here, and dealing some damage. Kevin has not jumped back to check it out yet. Vikarin, of course, is well aware of what's going on. He's made sure it went on the way it did. And now Kevin is double checking, seeing what's happening, and seeing that at the 224 mark now, the special op has been sent back and is attacking the RPs, dealing a fair amount of damage. Kevin has decided to stop some of these RPs, or Octos from building RPs, and attacking the Special Ops instead. The Special Ops is now dead. So once again, Kevin has deflected the attack, but now he's almost two minutes into the past. He's definitely being forced back further and further. Well, Vikarin is still ahead, making sure his macro keeps going at least roughly, not quite at the present, but nearer to the present than Kevin. 
Kevin does not have any build orders that close to the present. The green bar is right here. Those are the build orders. None of them are close to the present, while Vikran has plenty close to the present. And at the 325 mark, when Kevin is focused, an ATHC is coming towards his base as well. He has a Faro standing up, ready to ready to defend, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Normally, Faros can't just take out ATHCs in one go. If the Octo helps out, the ATHC will die. But I don't know if this Octo is being set up for an RP or if it's being set up for defense. Vikran has just jumped back right next to the Unplayable Past and is moving his Special Ops away, so that Special Ops will ultimately stay alive. Will not die, or no, never mind, Vikran, no. Last order for the Special Ops is sending it in to attack. However, the Octos, no, they're just far away enough to see it. The Octos won't see it, they won't stop it. Vikran will be able to get the Special Ops in and dealing some, no, it won't. The Octos, Kevin just barely got his Octos back to attack the Special Ops. And the Special Ops is running away, ultimately. This is very closely unplayable pass. There's really only a couple more orders that can be issued. And the Special Ops running away. Vikran is not... No, he is not able to save the Special Ops. The Special Ops has almost... Uh, there's maybe 10 seconds left, but hardly any current energy left. Vikran does not seem to be focused on saving the Special Ops. So that Special Ops is dead. That was uh, almost saved and almost got in to deal a bit more damage to the RPs. It's a nice little delayed attack. Never managed to do it, though. So Kevin deflected it successfully. Well done to Kevin. When Kevin is focused at the 408 mark, he is building up Seppi Pods. He has his air unit set up. He has a Spire. He has Seppi Pods coming in. And an ATHC coming in from the north to attack the RPs. While at the 3... Oh, he just jumped back about 10 seconds. He's changed to a Faro Pod from a Seppi Pod, although I think the Seppi Pod would have worked just fine. The, okay, admittedly, the ATHC is being detected by the Arcticus. So the Faro Pod can work. A Seppi Pod is coming in as well, so both Seppi Pod and Faro Pod. Okay, good. This is exactly what it needs, and another another Seppi Pod coming in. But the Faro Pod is not... No, it is being sent for defense. It is not being sent forward. It was originally rallied more towards the base. Now, Seppi Pod and Faro Pod. Seppi Pod in the expansion, and Faro Pod in the main deflecting the ATHCs. This is actually really a nice place of, for using the Seppi Pod, because the Seppi Pod is a detector. It will be able to see the ATHC, and it will, from there, be able to defend the natural expansion, although... or the third expansion. And Vikran, he does have his ATC in the back. The Seppi Pod has not attacked it yet. But it will soon. The Seppi Pods are coming in and are dealing some damage to that ATC. The ATC will not last very long at all. Now, Vikran has set up a base to the north with a Marine. He has also set up a Macrofab as his main base, getting some frigates. Nicely done countering. Uh, will be able to counter the Fire Pod and Seppi Pod. And wait, where are the Fire Pods? Kevin built a Fire Pod and. He does not seem to have ultimately... No, he is using it to the north. So he is not defending with the Fire Pod. He did get it. But he's certainly not defending. So that Fire Pod is... Is being useful, but Vikran can, of course, still attack the base fairly easily. Seppi Pod's also moving out. So another ATHC coming in to attack would hold Kevin back in his base. But Kevin's probably not phased by this. Tornot coming in and two frigates for Vikran to attack the Fire Pod. To finish it off, and Farpod is dead at the 53 mark. There's still about 30 seconds worth of meta time that can be used to save it, but I don't know if Kevin's really focused on it. He seems to be more focused on harassing with the Seppi Pod, or harassment in general. And he's actually doing a quite good job of this harassment effort. Really, when you consider that there is. Oh, the Farpod's been. Wait, what? The Farpod has not been. Couldn't have been saved, but Kevin has jumped further into the future. And is at least scouting a bit and attacking with the Fire Pod before it ultimately dies. No, he's moving it away entirely. He's avoided the attack. Yes, he has, in fact. He has saved the Fire Pod, avoided the attack from the Tornados and Frigates. With the Tornados and Frigates going to attack the Sippy Pods to the south instead at the 633 mark. He is destroying a couple RPs, and this is pretty... Well, there's still about 30 seconds before this is in the Unplayable Pass, but it's quite close. Sippy Pod is running away, so Kevin has saved a Sippy Pod as well. Building more Seppi Pods, so Kevin's doing a very good job of keeping his units alive, which really at this point is what you need to do with Grekum. They have, as much as they have parallel production, Kevin does not have as much of an economy going right now as Vikarin does, especially in terms of LC, so he can't easily expand, and of course he does need both LC and QP in large amounts to build his army. So keeping his units alive is very important. Throwing them away is a total waste, and it looks like Kevin has managed to keep his harassment alive in the main base. And moving it down to the south base and the southeast. More harassment coming in. The Tornad and Frigate group swooping towards the south. We'll be able to take care of the Farpod and Seppi Pod, but Seppi Pod's coming in from the main base, destroying one of the Frigates, destroying one of the Tornads. 
Throwing a second Tornado soon after, and the frigates are going down as well. So the frigates and Tornados are being destroyed in a hurry. Kevin has swooped in at just the right time. Vikran is moving his forces to attack Sepipods before they all run out of... Well, before they all lose their hi hierarchy leader. But even then, they're set up... They're disorganized enough that it won't be... Won't matter too much. They are not going to last long at all. So Vikran has to move his forces back. He's... He has moved his forces back slightly. He is pretty much abandoning the expansion, trying to attack from a better angle. This, actually, this will work. The Sepipods are a bad angle for this. They are mostly attacking the RPs. They are not attacking in force against the group. And it looks like Kevin, Kevin has all of his Sepipods and Firepods connected to one Arcticus, so he does have the command structure he needs. Getting a bunch of Sepis as well would be very helpful because, of course, these are all air units. Sepis are great anti-air. And moving some of his forces to the north to attack the RPs, so. Vikran and Kevin maneuvering very stealthily around each other, trying to avoid each other's balls of death. And I like to see that Grekum actually is managing to get a death ball up with CISO, not just one or the others, as usually happens. So the CISO death ball, the Ada Whitmark, is currently right in front of the natural, while Vikran, of course, has, in all these cases, he only has maybe one order. If Vikran has no orders right now, he needs half his chrono energy just to issue a single order, and his main forces are not in a hierarchy. This is quite bad for him. He is way out of position. Trying to move his forces back to his base and trying to defend where he can, but Kevin has managed to surround him, getting more and more units up. While Vikran actually has quite a lot of... He has a lot of money in the bank, but he doesn't have any chrono energy to build anything with. He's... And Kevin is... Actually, he did macro towards the present, too. As you can see, he had some construction orders along the timeline that have not come up yet. So nicely done by Kevin. Vikran, however, doesn't have as much production in the future, and he's losing a lot of his forces near the unplayable past. So, Vikran is in a very bad spot right now. He may be able to get back from this if he macros to the, to the, towards the present. He does have a base still in the present, and he does have resources in the present. So he macros towards the present, to get, maybe gets a few more factories and macrofabs towards the present, as Kevin is doing. He will be able to get up a good force. He does have a lot of money, so he can easily get enough of a force to come back later on in the game. But right now, Kevin's the only person that's macroing closer to the present than their current time. So Vikran, very focused on the playable past, running out of chrono energy fast. He has a few units left, but he does not have the death ball he needed and that he had. Losing command of it through the hierarchy destruction. He is losing a lot of it through Sepipods. Sepipods destroying the frigates. Another frigate trying to go around, scout around, but the Sepipods flanking on both sides and destroying it completely. So that is one fewer frigate for Kevin to deal with, but at this point, Kevin pretty much can just steamroll with Sepipods. However, if he doesn't, then Vikran will have some window, like I said, to macro in the future, but it doesn't look, doesn't look like Vikran is doing that. Vikran is focused way too much on this unplayable past section, which is understandable. It's kind of scary to try to jump towards the future not knowing if it's going to exist. Unfortunately, it's worth pointing out that the, he has no current energy where he is now, and the future is... Well, future very quickly becomes past, and it's very important that you have units regardless. Unfortunately, Vikran is not going and doing that. He is instead staying towards the unplayable past and not building up too much. Kevin, on the other hand, Kevin actually isn't pushing towards the future as much as he was before either. But he doesn't. It doesn't matter for him. He has a giant death ball. He is. He is now going for the steamroll. He's going for the final push. One of the macrofabs getting heavily damaged. The other factory in the front getting heavily damaged and will be destroyed very soon. A tank coming in to try to help out, but the tank will not last long. Importers are going down as well, and Vikran, of course, has some reserves, but not not very many. Vikran has... Sorry, Kevin has jumped forward a bit to... Well, beyond the attack, and just double-checking the future. Macroing towards... Actually, he's still macroing nearer to the present. Vikran, on the other hand, has to deal with this blob of death, and has really nothing to deal with it. He's trying to get... No, he's GG'd. He's trying to get some mechs, but not nearly enough. So, Vikran has GG'd. Kevin, nicely done. So, that is... That was Kevin versus Vikran. Nice done, Kevin, for managing to macro quite well closer to the present. Not quite at the present, but closer to the present than the unplayable past edge. So, that was very interesting. Nicely done, Kevin.